Hi, so happy we're all here together uh, to continue learning Kuntras Havoida, which is um, by the Rebbe Rashad. And those of you who are not here last week, uh, we were actually discussing that uh, there's two main objectives in our prayers. Uh, one, to have our godly soul bond with our uh, Father, our God above. And uh, the second is to refine the animal soul. And both these endeavors will lead to both of our hearts, the hearts of our animal soul as well as the heart of our godly soul to be on fire and, uh, and with love and more uh, fear of Hashem. And we were saying that different sections of the prayers actually allow us to enter the higher worlds and the elevation for our mind, our emotions, our actions, and even our the part of our soul that's transcendent actually becomes more and more elevated and things begin to change and shift. When your animal soul is refined, then out goes all the negative emotions, slowly but surely, day by day. Um, so... So that's uh, what prayer is all about. Um, when we pray, the Rebbe Rishab says it's like really pouring out our soul. Uh, and it's like right before Hashem. And it, it really allows our soul to ascend. And then our desire for God rises. And um, that's why it says in the verse in Tehillim 25, to you, I will lift up my soul. Uh, so, because during prayer, that's what's happening. And uh, this longing for godliness continues to grow. And um, this is like such a higher illumination that it begins to create a fiery flame of desire. And... At the same time, when we pray, it says here, this fiery passion of ours then starts to purify and refine our animal soul. And that's why it says that we don't have sacrifices anymore, and in lieu of the sacrifices, we pray. And the pastor said that he brings out, man, when offering from you a sacrifice. What are we sacrificing? Our animal soul. That's within us. So now the Rebbe Roshav is going to explain to us um, the different details of how we pray will affect different parts of us. So for instance, when we have kavana, when we have intention, when we use our mind deeply in prayer, that's going to have a different effect on us than just speaking the words of prayer. So, so on the one hand, many places we learn, it is so important that we have intentions with our heart, that, that we should have meditation and kavana. Um, and sometimes you learn that really, you know, you're, you're, you're using the speech of your prayer to help you have a greater concentration, so you'll have a greater intention. But also we know that when we pray, there are angels called the angels of Sandal. Sandal makes crowns from uh, the for the Hashem's crown up in Shemaim from the Jewish people, and this is coming from the letters and speech of prayer. So we know on the one hand it's very important to have kavana and really think about what we're saying, understand the word and uh, uh, especially take it even further and have these kinds of meditative experiences in our prayer. But speech of the prayer is as important because as the Rebbe Roshab says, without the speech, without the letters of our prayer, then the words don't get taken by the uh, you know, uh, angels and then the crown of God is not made. Um, which means, um, 
you know, how important it is now. And later in different places in Tanya, we learn that um, the speech not only helps you concentrate, but if you don't do it with your actual lips, it's considered that you did not pray. Because in order for it to be considered a mitzvah, it has to be an action done. And the Alter Rebbe explains, the more forceful you use your words, like it could be just a little minimal, or it could be really the whole mouth saying the word and hearing your voice, then the more of your animal soul you're using, then the more the animal soul will be refined. Because you're taking the animal soul's energy, negative energy away from it, um, by, by using it for something holy. So, so when we're having the kavanas, then really this elevates the godly soul. But when we're considering the animal soul, then when we think about, wow, the animal soul needs to be refined and purified, then the speech of the prayer is more important. So you need to do both. Now, the Rebbe Shab is going to tell us what is the difference between the letters of prayer and the letters of the Torah? The letters of the Torah come from a very high world where everything is so pure, and it's from the world of Atsilas. It's very, very, very close, a world that is very close to Hashem. But the letters of prayer comes from the lower world. And these lower worlds also need rectification and elevation. And our words of prayer actually then affect these higher worlds. Why do we want these higher worlds to be affected? Because once the, in all worlds, um, up to Attila's, every world has a mixture of good and not good. So when our letters reach the higher world, then it rectifies and banish the not good in those worlds, which means then more blessings come into our life. It has a, a power to change gvurot, judgments, to chasadim, to kindness in our life. Whether it's, wow, God created me with a fiery temperament like a baker's oven, and I need that to be changed. So I need my speech in my prayers to reach the higher worlds, do the cleansing up there, banishing the darkness and the not good up there. Then all of a sudden, a light returns, and, it, and then, then that banishes my darkness. And that turns my, from my gvurot to chesed. So, so there's a difference, um, for instance, um, uh, and, and the Rebbe Hashem gives the example of this difference between stones and bricks. Stones are avanim, and bricks are levanim. Stones are a creation of God. And those are the letters that Hashem gave the Torah with. But bricks is man-made. So we understand that through the letters, this infinite light of Hashem comes into and is transmitted into the creation of the world. So one who learns Torah must pronounce the words out loud to be able to bring this godliness into the world. Since Levanim are man-made, and this represents prayer. Because when we're speaking our our prayers, it's like man-made. And it's not necessarily the letters that come from above, but it's letters that are coming from below. That's why it says in the Amida, there are no words on my tongue. Please, Hashem, open my lips. Even though we're asking Hashem, please open my lips, but it's my word. It's man-made words, even though it's words that we're reading from a sitter. So, Baruch Hashem, without any effort, Hashem helps us that these words will come out. 
Um, and and what happens is while we're saying it, we're nullifying ourselves. It's like beyond understanding. Because the letters of a prayer comes from the inner recesses of our heart, from the depths of our heart. Um, especially if we've been a little far away from Hashem and we have a moment of lapses and and and, and uridas, you know, going down a bit. So um, now when we take a moment and, and, and we open our mouth and we say the words in prayer to come close to Hashem with all of our natural abilities, like to the point where my heart and my flesh sing, then these prayers become crowns for Hashem, like a crown that is made of shining stones. So he brings actually an example of two different types of gems that shine. And I'm going to bring a sikh of the Rebbe that actually points out there's a discrepancy in um, in the in the, the sages who question which stones are going to be the dominant stone during the time of the Beit HaMikdash. The, the two stones are Shoham and Yashve. So the question is asked, um, why do some say one and why do some say the other? And then the Rebbe comes and says both. So let me explain each one and what does it symbolize. One gem is a gem that does not have any color of its own, but it's it's a clear and it shines the color that it's next to. And one gem is its own gem and its own brilliant, radiant color. So what does this represent? When Mashiach comes, what is it really going to be? Is God going to like show such a revelation and that all of us are going to be like um, like that gem that is just um, shining off of God's radiance? Because I didn't do much in my lifetime. Maybe I didn't pray so much like I could have. I didn't learn as much as I could have. So, so God's radiance is going to come out. Is it going to be his radiance and not it? Or is it going to be the stone which represents my work, my own color, and my own light from my Torah, from my davening, from my mitzvahs, from my tzedakah, my chesed? So the Rebbe says it's going to be both. So it's going to be like this revelation from Hashem from above, but it's also going to be your own work and what you did, depending on what you did. So if you didn't do as much, then your light won't be as shiny from your own shining energies that come from your holy endeavors. So, so, so these gems are created for God's crown. But guess what? It's going to be revealed when the future comes. And it depends. What did we do? Did we run around going shopping? Did we run around do things that who knows that we're, you know too much and excessive of indulging in the material world? Did we make our soul first when we woke up in the morning and, and, and make the effort that our own words will become that shining light? And again, each one, depending on his effort, will depend on how much God's revelation will be bestowed upon them when Mashiach comes. But this is not just for Lati Davo. It's for now. Every day, angels come to take our prayers and bring it up, and that's how much more shining radiance is coming back down to us from that effort in praying. And it has to do with everything in the physical world. As we mentioned last class, I believe, that, uh, and if... uh, some of you weren't here, so it's good to review this. There was a time period where there was a big, big, like, machlekas that some were, like, very bothered that these chassidim, yeah, hi, that would, uh, wow, I have to sing a song. I'm <laughs> so happy. Baruch Hashem. So, oh, let me give it to you. So, no, 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 so you'll do it well. <laughs> So, 
So, so the Hasidim were uh, praying three hours Shachari, three hours Mincha, and three hours Mari. And the other group were very bothered. This is unheard of. This is such Bittel Torah, and they could not like be at peace with this. And there was just a lot of uh, conflict. But um, after a while, after many, many years, people started to notice <laughs> that the people that daven so profoundly and spend a lot of time on the level of their intellect, their one hour of learning was equivalent to the other group who wasn't davening so much, to a hundred hours of learning. So the little learning they did, they really understood it, and that was it. They got it. And they were able to then really live the information on the, the level of their midot, the level of refining their character traits, they were transformed way greater than the group that, that did the rush davening and didn't really develop and meditate, um, you know, their their uh, inner consciousness to Hashem and His greatness. Also, the same group that did more davening had parnasa, they had livelihood, they had less uh, medical issues, things just flow, miracles. It just was an easier, way easier life. So... So when, as we were studying, as we enter each part of the davening, on all accounts, our physical life is easier. When and when we enter, since um, some of you weren't here last week, and I would highly recommend to write this down, from Modani till Baruch Shamar, that's where our nefesh enters the world of Asiya. So that's like we're all we're asking God and blessing God for all these physical things. Because that part of our nefesh is getting elevated. When we go from Baruch Shemar to Baruch Hu, our Ruach is entering the world of Yitzira. And then that part of the davening is elevating our emotions. So I have anger, I have sadness, I have this. That's being elevated. Sorry, can you repeat the thing the world of Yeah, the, the world of Yetzirah is where all the angels serve Hashem with emotion. So your world is, en- your soul is entering this world. And so your Ruach is elevated. Your emotions are going to be rectified and elevated so that all the positive, healthy emotions that you have been bequeathed by Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, of being able to love Hashem, to have Nirat Hashem, to be kind, to be patient, is drawn out of you because you're entering that world. From the Baruch uh, to Shema, your Neshama, which is the part of your, your soul that enters the world of Bria, and in the world of Bria is where all the angels serve Hashem with intellect. Literally, your mind is getting elevated, rectified, transformed, stronger, so that what you've learned becomes more ingrained in you, and you'll be able to remember what you learn, and then you'll be able to apply what you learn. And by the way, we mentioned many, many months ago when we were more focusing on tefillah, that all mitzvahs ascend from tefillah, that it's a ladder. So that I, the mashal is that you, you do all these mitzvahs, and like a person who's going to work. He worked a full 40 hours, hard, back-breaking labor. End of the week, the man gets the check. He says, it's in your little uh, in the envelope on your desk. Uh, and he, he's already like downstairs and he goes, go get your check. Oh, I am so tired. No, I can't. I can't do anything more. No, no, you're going to take it to the bank. You'll have... No, I'm so tired. And next week, two weeks, he doesn't go and get the check. So he has to cash in. Cash in. He works so hard. So you're doing all these mitzvahs. During tefillah is the cash in time. 
and you don't do the tefillah, it's like there's no ladder to take your work up to Shemaim to the highest and highest of the world. And then in the davening, from the Pasuk, Zorea, Stakot, Matzmiach, Yeshua, the Altar Rabbi says, you plant seeds, and then you sprout those seeds. Planting seeds is the night davening, bringing all of our day's work up to Shemaim. So you say Shema Lamita, you cleanse your soul, so your soul will be free to enter the higher world. If you don't do this service, then God forbid the sins of the day can kind of weigh you down, and then you can be stuck in between worlds. And then you're not well rested physically because you're just like a phone needs to rest and be recharged, the soul needs to be recharged, but it needs to be able to go to the higher world. Then when you enter those higher worlds, all the planting of those seeds happen, Alter Rebbe says. And in the morning, the Matzmich Yeshua, the sprouting of all the salvation from those mitzvahs you do come in the davening. So you need both. So during the time of davening, it's called Moichin de Gadlut. It's the time of supernal intellect. And during that time, your neshama goes into the world of Bria and gets elevated. And so just like when there is, if you have like a Lego, or, uh, you know, and, and you put all the Legos together, and then you take the top part of the Lego, which is all attached, then all the other bottom parts of the Lego go up. So each part of the davening, as you're going up and up and up, each part of your lower soul goes up and up and up. So some women don't do the whole davening. And then it's like they're missing part of this, this process of being able to have every part of their soul elevated by each section. Kam Shmona Esrei and the higher part of our soul enters the world of Atzillus, and that part of our soul is the transcendent part of us. So, for instance, let's say you had a huge, huge mansion house, and the house is surrounding you. And then you look at a, uh, uh, an umbrella, and the umbrella is right close to you surrounding you. So these transcendent qualities about you are really, f- like, very transcendent and very, like, out there. When you dive in, you draw these transcendent powers to come closer to you like an umbrella. Then eventually another day, and another day, then it finally comes into you. So it's not something surrounding you. It's not something so distant from you. And what is the part of the chaya of your neshama that helps you? The chaya of your neshama is a level of wisdom that helps you see good in people, help you see good in the world. And we had mentioned in the Mystery of Marriage book from Rabbi Ginsburg that you need the chai of your neshama to be able to relate to your husband. You got that as a gift when you got married, freebie, to help you find your husband. And then after you get married, he takes that away from you. And now you have to return your chaya to your soul by refining yourself and elevating yourself through prayer to then get that gift again to be able to see the good in the other. That's why a lot of people, when they first get married, they're like, I didn't know about that. I didn't see that. Had I known? Oh, my gosh. Did I make a mistake? Some people go through that. A lot of people, actually. More than I would like to. So, so the idea is that the prayers is the process by which you can even bring down the transcendent part of your soul to help, help you uh, see the good in the other. And that's why it says in the Pasuk, Matzah Tov, no, Matzah Isha, Matzah Tov. Because first Hashem helps you find Him the first time, and then you have to work on yourself to find the good in the other. And how are you going to find the good in the other? By refining yourself. By drawing down this higher level part of your soul into your inner consciousness so that then you can see the good in the other as well as in life in general. So, 
That's why it says that when you pray and you use your words, then what happens is the angel of Sandal takes these, these words, brings it up to Hashem and makes a crown uh, out of these gems. And these gems are according to your effort that you put into your davening, then it's according to them that the light that's going to shine back at you and bless you so that the angels now can come down and help you on all accounts, mind, body, and soul, emotion, intellect, and physical. So now you use your letters to purify and refine yourself by praying. And this is the words, you know, the different letters that you're going to engage in all day long. So if we begin our day using it for holiness, again, if it's just the lips kind of moving, then you don't as well have as much holy energy to, like, banish the darkness of the animal soul. So the more forceful you use your lips, and uh, how much more so you could hear the words, and how much more so if you sing the words, which we'll go into that after we end uh, the chapter, then, then that much more power to you to refine your animal soul. So now you used your words in prayer. Now your voice becomes precious and the letters become luminous and they become such crowns for Hashem that then you're going to have such an arousal of feeling of love and then throughout the day you're starting not on ground zero with your voice. Now it's like you can more cruise control and and like like go with the flow of having used your voice in such a holy way that then it's like easier for you to use your voice when you speak to your husband, when you speak to your child. Because you already started the process of using it in such a holy way. So we know in one of the books that I actually read... I, um, Oh, I think you gave me that book as a present. It was, yeah, on Fila. It was a little a booklet, and I really, it really affected me profoundly. Uh, a mashal of, of, you know, like we're praying, and we're praying, like we want this change, and we want that change, and like, wait a minute. If someone was supposed to go to surgery, and the surgery was going to be good for them, would you go to the doctor and say, oh, please, 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 don't do it. Please, 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 please. Oh, please. No, you know that it's going to save your life and it's going to give you Bezrat Hashem 120 more years. So how, if things that are happening to us are for our good, like how is it possible that we should pray and ask God to not have this happen to us? So the teaching was as follows. Two, two points. One, that when you pray, you're not changing God's mind so he won't do something to you so that you'll be elevated. Because usually through the challenging experience, that squeezes the best out of you and you get elevated by it. If you look at it that way, if you pay attention that now I'm going to work on <laughs> learning a lesson from this, I'm going to like uh, overcome it, I'm going to show my bitachon and emuna and Hashem, but what's happening during prayer, you're changing yourself. So that that doesn't then get needed. The struggle, the challenge, the crisis doesn't get needed to change yourself. And another teaching in the Rebbe Rashad says that you have the choice. Either you're going to crush yourself in tefillah, not like hoo 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 and crying and I'm going to crush myself and beat myself to the ground. No. I'm crushing my will. I want to get this done, I have to do that done. Blah, 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 blah. You crush your will a good 45 minutes, a good hour of davening. You're crushing your priorities in life of all the things that have to be done in your life. Trust me, I also, Baruch Hashem, 
know the challenges of of children and all that kind of stuff. But then God doesn't have to crush you with life experiences because you're doing it yourself in prayer. So another muscle in in this book actually it reminds me that uh, he says, imagine you're going to uh, um, the top, top, top specialist doctor. He's amazing. He, he, he Kumanda and, and everything else, and brilliant, genius, and 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 precision, unbelievable. And you go to him, and all of a sudden, God forbid, not you. And we don't need doctors. No, no. We are all healthy, Baruch Hashem. Someone, and all of a sudden, he starts getting lazy. He has the best tools, the best technology, but he doesn't start to wash his utensil between surgeries. So the utensil that was so, like $100,000 to get these utensils, whatever it is, and he decides, I can't bother. I, I, I need the next patient. I don't have time. I'm lazy. So the mashal is your mouth is the utensil that is about to say such holy words. It's very important in the morning to start using it and cleaning it so that, that you'll be able to have your words get lifted to Hashem. So even the day before, you say, wow, I don't want to use the same utensil that I'm speaking now, this negativity, God forbid, and then I'm going to have to use the same utensil. And It's like the surgeon who doesn't wash his utensil between between surgeries. Our mouth is that utensil. So when we start the day this way, Baruch Hashem, then we have a better one, coping mechanism, so that it will stay clean, so we don't have to clean it in between. Um, and if God forbid, during the day we didn't, we clean it at night, so that we can wake up refreshed, recharged, and allow whatever mitzvahs that we planted during the night of all the day's mitzvahs so we can cash it in during our uh, tefillah during the day. So, now, Many people might think that, uh, you know, well, I wasn't raised this way. I don't know. How can Fila actually take the pain of my past traumas, my, my, you know, uh, you know, my genetic disposition uh, towards certain behaviors or my environment that I learned certain behaviors? I am who I am. And for years I've been going to therapists maybe and I went to this and I read books. Nothing shifting. So it's brought down here that when, uh, as a reminder to us that we really have to have complete emuna, that Hashem didn't put us in a prison without giving us the key to be able to get out of it. And the story comes from Noah, I mean Abraham. When Abraham was told to leave, his land, his birthplace, and his house of his father. This was symbolic and referring to him and to all generations that no matter where the behavior that you are dealing with today has come from, whether it's ingrained and habitual in our behavior, because land comes from the word ratzon. Ratzon, if you switch the words around, it's eretz. Right, what's son, Eris. If you got in a habit of a certain type of behavior, lech lecha, you can move away from that and go to the real you. That's why it says three different things to move from. He could have said just go. Okay, go from your land. But to say all these specific three things is a clue to us. We can move away from our rasan, from our habits that we acquired. Some people get in the habit of having some sweet nosh no matter what, at the end of the night. It's a, it's a habit. Birthplace stands for the inborn genetic personality, meaning 
You were born with a fiery temperament, with a fire like a baker's oven. That's what you were born with. Another person was born with more uh, water element, that they're the type of person that has taivas. It doesn't matter what you were born with. I mean, I know as a mother, when I felt in my stomach, one was more fiery than the other. I saw when they might be changing their diaper. One was more fiery than the other. That was what they were born with. So you can leave even your genetic predisposition towards specific character traits that is ingrained in your in your in your genetics. Lech lecha, you can go to the real you. Third, house of your father. Oy oy oy, some of us and what we have gone through in our houses. Even what we've learned and habituated in our family and environment, we can move away from those things and come to the real you. And the real you is that godly essence that has love and yirat Hashem and has the ability to use all koichas from the ten spheros in a holy, wonderful way. And all this starts from tefillah. The tefillah is engaging in a, 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 a time of looking at Hashem's glory. And it's a time of cleaving the soul to Hashem's or and self light and beginning to enjoy these deepest and most sublime pleasures. Rabbi Rishab earlier had said, because God deserves it. Although you're benefiting greatly, but like, you know, modani, thank you, Hashem, that you had emuna in me. The emuna secha, you returned me. So the minimum I can do is trust you throughout my day, and the minimum I can do is is give you desire and you pleasure in me. So. So the idea is that that through the processes of our tefillah, we draw down the or and oh. So. So the idea is that when you dive in, most people don't really realize that it's like really the greatest mitzvah that one can affect change, period. When you say bracha on an apple, the sparks in the apple are there, and you are saying the bracha and affecting a change in the apple. When you pray, you're drawing down these godly lights that are now going to change the world. What's better? You changing something or God's our and self light coming to change, including your animal soul, including the midot, the not good midot. And the Alter Rebbe says that these are the lights similar to Mashiach. What are the lights of Mashiach? What's going to happen when the lights of Mashiach comes? It's going to banish the darkness, the evil, the sicknesses, the, the evil of people's behavioral character traits. So there is nothing like praying. And of course, when you use your me'od, when you use the maximum of your ability, a little swaying, a little word, voice, singing, mind, thoughts, meditation, all comes from as they say, then you're able to draw Hashem's ma'od. doesn't matter. Your ma'od is bupkis compared to Hashem's ma'od, right? I just did a little extra effort and used my ma'od. So, then, this is Hashem's ma'od that comes down and whoosh, Elevation after elevation. And day after day, 
things change. Some people say, well, I've been doing it for a week. If you're building a house, how long does it take? Does it happen one day? You're building a new your brain structure. You're building a new yourself. Thank God. Hashem gives us this opportunity. And I say to people when they say, I don't have time, I don't have time. If you had known this woman that I knew in Great Neck and three, I mean in Israel, she had to travel from Yerushalayim to Tel Aviv for special treatment of dialysis and her whole day three times a week was that experience. To live, if she didn't, go, God forbid. So the more desperate you are to fix yourself, you have to see it like a dialysis. Because this is what's going to change you. And that's why you're here. The author of says the whole reason why you're here is to fix these needles. That's it. Bottom line. You build the house. You go to an architect and you say, look, I love your designs. You're amazing. You're ingenious. But one, one, can you please, please, one request. Can you build the foundation with Play-Doh? You out of your mind? Play-Doh? I'm the expert. You can't build on Play-Doh. So you're building your day. And God tells you this is how you start your day. But you think you're too busy, you have this, you have that, blah, 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 I'll go. But then you get so upset, or you get so annoyed, or you didn't have the bitachon, or you lost it, you're fat, whatever. And then you think, why did God do this to me? Oh, what did I do? You're building your day. And your day is your positive attitude toward the day. And, and the davening helps you have that positive. He's actually building your day of how it's going to be, what event is going to happen. How you're going to respond to it is your free choice. But if, as uh, we mentioned this before, the Rebbe says that when your soul comes back into your body in the morning, it stays in your nose. You need to refine your body to allow it to be cleansed and ready for the godly soul to come. And that happens through prayer. If you didn't pray, the godly soul pretty much stays in the nose and you're all animal soul. Now, if you had a very chak chak blah, 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 kind of davening, then it, the body wasn't so refined, so it'll come in, but it won't really permeate your whole being. So the day will be that much more challenging with the Yitzhahar and that much more challenging with the Ruach Shtus and the spirit of folly and your be Chas uh, V'chalila more, you know, tempted and not as easily strengthened to battle that Yitzhahar. Lech lecha. We can go to the true you. The foundation is the when you have that best davening. So, so I'm going to stop here so we can do a meditation and we can dance. And I bless you that uh, that you are a little more enlightened today. I get excited for those beautiful angels, the angels of Sandal, to come and take your words, your kavanas, up to Shemaim, so it could reach the highest of highest of worlds and make the most beautiful crown for Hashem, which in the end is going to be shining back to you that day and in Latid Lavon. And I remember learning in the Haggadah Seder, I was like really surprised where it says, it talks about the bitter herbs, and this is actually in reference to the feelings we'll have in the future when we will be each under our own canopy of light. But we will see those that worked harder with their own efforts to do Hashem's will. And we will be green with envy. And this represents that, that now is the time 
so that in the time to come, there will be no envy. We will all be shining and experiencing godly light like the way Hashem wants. So, yes. Thank you so much. We'll pass it to Dr. Yeah, I saw her put it out, so it reminds me. My students remind me, also in Corona, it's just so exciting to be able to share and, and uh, just all the blessings for the stuff that you give. So we're going to put some uh, beautiful music and the gunin, and we're going to help ourselves actualize what we just learned to really upgrade uh, our communication with Hashem. If AT&T can upgrade a phone for you, uh, Hasidus can help upgrade your telecommunications with Hashem. Says <laughs> Rat Hashem. And... Uh, And hopefully, uh, through doing this meditation, all of us will be inspired, whether it is to wake up another 15 minutes earlier to daven and make sure to go to sleep 15 minutes earlier, whether it's... Everyone has to make a cheshvan right now. Where in your life can you dedicate more golden, pure time zones? I did it. I used to daven a little later, go to sleep later, and then it was when my husband or my daughter and my this and the phone and the hi and, blah, 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 and like it was so hard. I said, that's it. I'm eating less at night. I'm going to eat lighter at night. And I'm going to uh, wake up earlier when it's not the time where people call and text and this and that. And ever since then, everything has shifted in such a wonderful way. And uh, and those of you sometimes who see me at weddings and it's late and they serve the meat at 10 o'clock at night, I say, can I have a baggie? That will be my lunch tomorrow. So that I am very much blessing you to be vigilant. Hi, good to see you. Um, that uh, that we we be vigilant on um, what we do at night so we can work, wake up earlier and, and more refreshed and, and so that we have a better job to address the Shem. So we're going to put the... Uh, I wonder if this will work together. Okay, I'll just put the niggun from here. I mean, I did bring it, so let's put it. Let's put it. I never put the two here. If it will raise the... I don't know if it's going to disconnect the phone. Okay, I'm getting the music. Oh, wow, what song is on here? I'm so excited. It's my daughter's song, but without her lyrics. And the name of the song is Memories of Love. Wow, because when we dove in, no, it's the first CD. The second one was the Legacy. This one is, hold on one second. Like that. Let's see now. The should be able to record and make the music louder, I pray. that We're experimenting here. Maybe it's not going to work. Oh, because it's multiple calls. I don't know if it'll work. Better to be cold than hot. Let me try one more time. Doesn't look like it's doing both at the same time. Maybe it is. Okay, it's not allowing it to do both. So next time I have to bring my eye watch. Okay, so whoever wants to come closer to hear this mu- beautiful music, it's actually, uh, I believe it's a nigun. Yeah, it's a nigun of, and she's converted it and put her own worship. But this is uh, the wife. Oh, yeah, because it's fun. All right, so we'll just take a deep breath. And with every breath we take, we just feel a wave of relaxation. And for those of you who are new, 
the key ingredient to allow the light of your learning to be able to penetrate deep within you so that it'll be internalized and eventually actualized is through the bond, especially during Tefillah. We already covered that, but just in some new faces here, that uh, as we said earlier, the most supernal light comes to us in our davening. So we should stop at the Yotzer or Bracha, meditate and contemplate and have his bonus on something we learned, and then it will literally become more ingrained in our brain so that we can remember it and, and really actualize it. Many times people say, how do you know all this by heart now? I said, because every time I would learn something, a Tanya of the day, a Yom Yom, the Ticha, I would take it in the Yotzer or Bracha, the way the Rebbe Rishab uh, guided me to do, and I started being able to remember it easier, so easier. You, you just stop and think about what you've learned and, re- like, review it, and, and you can also do images in your mind to help you, you know, uh, better... Like, um, remember it. Like, for instance, one time I was learning Rabbi Jacobson's class. Uh, he has a lecture series. And he was explaining how by our efforts, our soul gets raised and raised. So he gave an example. Like, you know, you have a shot glass, and you do Torah and Mitzvah's Torah, and you fill up that shot glass. That's the lowest level soul, let's say. But then God sees you filled it up almost to the top. He fills it up, and then he gives you like a wine goblet. And then you fill it up, Torah, Mitzvah, and then he sees you almost to the top, he fills it up, and he gives you a wine bottle. So I would meditate, and I would see, like, wow, my Torah and Mitzvahs are filling up my soul, and now I'm going to get, you know, like a Kiddush cup instead of just a shot glass. And you could use images to help you remember the what you learn, and then meditate on it, and it'll help you remember it. That's why there was 3,000 mashals that Shlomo Melch had for one teaching. He had so many uh, ways of deeper and deeper explanation. Okay, so we'll just take a moment and uh, close our eyes. And my vision today is a most beautiful crown with the most gorgeous gems. Get ready. So with every breath you take, you just feel a wave of relaxation and like, all the stress and the tension is just like melting away and like now you're really able to like just feel more and more relaxed after each breath is taken and Nishima is helping you connect to your Nishama and just take yourself to the most beautiful place a relaxing place Maybe uh, by a a body of water, a holy place that you like to go to and have time for yourself and have time to like really focus inward. Every step you take, you just feel more and more relaxed. And you actually get closer and closer to this most awesome, beaming light. And you're very drawn to that light, and you're really yearning to connect to this light, this holy light. And there, behold, near a tree is a table with a sitter, and the light is beaming from this sitter. Like you're yearning to really have this light now become a soothing balm, a soothing holy energy to like cure you, heal you, and elevate you. To be able to have all the positive, healthy emotions and that the Shrina and God's light can mamish more easily reside in you. And you see yourself opening it and the light is beginning to grow. And just so many holy letters as you're saying the word are just reaching the higher world. So sparkly, so angelic. And you see angels lifting them up and bringing them to Shemaim. 
so beautiful like gems. And then you see yourself seeing these words enter each world, helping you elevate and grow mind, body, and soul. Entering each world. And within each world, you become rectified, elevated. Your actions, your emotions, your intellect, and even drawing down the more transcended parts of you. And then you see all these words turn into gems and holy lights around Hashem's crown. Hashem storing it for you to be revealed throughout your day and to be revealed in Matid Lavo ultimately when Mashiach comes. You're so drawn to this light. You have so much of a desire, a comforting, holy light always around you and now within you. You don't want to let go of this image, but you say to yourself, please, Hashem, remind me in the morning to have this yearning, to have this clearly a desire within me to do whatever I need to do to be able to embrace this holy Mashiachic light, to be able to have all my heart, to be able to grow in love for you. Thank Hashem for His sake to help you not get scattered and not get confused in the morning. To really set your mind straight to what's essential for your life. You close the sitter. The lights are with you. You take the sitter with you. It's always with you. And you start to feel the weight of your body, the body that wants so much to actualize the holiness of these words that are said in your prayers, in the day-to-day behaviors. Be now a vision of yourself without the negativity because this light of your prayers banished it. Your eyes are softer. Your lips is so much more at ease to say kind, soft words. Even like the way you stand is just more calm, more relaxed. You're seeing yourself being able to just really absorb this light and really get to the real you. Make hachata and beg Hashem to help you keep it. That you're going to build the day with davening. And when you're ready, just open your eyes and feel so grateful and thankful to Hashem that He gives you that opportunity every day to unite and bond with Him, allowing you to escape all the pressures and stresses of the day, to mamish unite fully with Hashem.
remember, as you open your eyes, I bless you to keep shining by smiling through it all. Day by day, we're getting there. Baruch Hashem. Wow. Thank you. A decision. If you make a decision, and that's it. That's your commitment to Hashem, that you made this decision to do something, and then you do it. That's Hashem. That was beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Wow, thank you. Wow, I'm so happy. I hope you can join us more often. I know you see for a class. Uh, I know whenever I get to go to a class, I'm like, 